This video is sponsored by Audible, the home of storytelling with all your audio entertainment in one app. New members can try it free for 30 days by visiting audible.com slash companyman or by texting companyman to 500-500. Jimmy John's is a popular fast food chain in the United States, known for their fresh sandwiches. Seriously, have you ever had one of these? You probably have, considering they have estimated system-wide sales of over $2 billion a year, making them the fourth largest sandwich chain in the country. But if you are one of those people who hasn't contributed to those sales yet, I really think it's worth giving them a try, because to me anyway, they stand out a bit from all those others. They do things a little differently over at Jimmy John's, which is why I thought they would be a perfect subject for this video. Today, I want to talk about the history of Jimmy John's and what makes them unique by identifying what I believe to be some of the biggest reasons behind their success. Starting off with the guy behind all of it, Jimmy John. The differences start right here, because Jimmy John Leoto has to be one of the most unlikely success stories I have covered on this channel, and I don't mean any offense there, I'll bet that he would agree with that statement himself. See, he had a lot of issues in high school. His father was a struggling entrepreneur in a Chicago suburb, even filed for bankruptcy twice, but despite the family typically not having much money, Jimmy John was enrolled in a prestigious prep school where he said he simply felt out of place among the other much wealthier students. It caused him to rebel. He did just about everything you're not supposed to do in high school. Drinking, smoking, showing up later, skipping class altogether, starting fights, and getting terrible grades. It got to a point where the teachers had voted to expel him before his final year, but fortunately, the Dean of Discipline was like the one guy who believed in him, and he successfully fought to keep Jimmy John enrolled in that school. By the way, the support of that Dean meant so much to Jimmy John that about 25 years later, after he became a big success, he donated $1 million to that school for a new building under the condition that that new building be named after that dean. So he stayed enrolled in the school for a senior year and in 1982 graduated second from the bottom of his class. With grades like that, clearly college didn't seem to be a practical option, but his father's business was on a bit of an upswing, so he was able to present Jimmy John with an opportunity. He was offered $25,000 that he can use to try to start his own business business, but if he failed at it, he would have to follow in his father's footsteps and join the army. He had always been passionate about food, so he knew that that was the direction he wanted to take with his business. Being from the Chicago area, he was initially inspired by the hot dog chain Portillo's, but he quickly learned that starting a hot dog restaurant would require more capital than he had. He said that the best deal he could find for all the equipment he needed was $40,000. He couldn't get his father to offer up any more than the $25,000, and as an inexperienced 18-year-old who barely graduated from high school, he had no idea idea how to write up a business plan to attempt to get a loan or any other kind of funding, so the hot dog venture proved to be impractical for him. But as luck would have it, he happened to be eating at a sandwich shop one day and took notice of the limited equipment that they were using, mainly just a meat slicer, an oven, a cooler, and that was about it. He spent a few months traveling around to other sandwich shops, conducting research about how to operate that sort of business, and the following January, one day after his 19th birthday, and almost exactly 40 years before the making of this video, he opened the first ever Jimmy John's. Not necessarily a sensation right away, but it was profitable in its first year. $40,000 was split between his father and himself, and he said that he had put in so much work that the money he made realistically averaged to less than a dollar an hour. But after the second year, he had made enough money to pay back his father's initial loan and became the full owner of the restaurant. Obviously, Jimmy John has continued to be a big part of Jimmy John's over the years, to a point where he has played a major part in all of my other reasons behind their success, the second one being their emphasis on college towns. Now, this isn't the case nearly as much anymore, so I'm not going to talk about it too much, but it was a huge part of their strategy in the beginning. College students were like the perfect demographic for simple, cheap sandwiches that he was selling, and that was most of his customer base. The location that was chosen for that first Jimmy John's was near Eastern Illinois University. Business was slow at first, and one of the things that helped pick it up was going on campus and offering up tiny sandwiches as free samples to the students. Four years later, when he was ready to open his second restaurant, he chose chose a spot that was close to Western Illinois University. And then the following year, he opened his third location close to the University of Illinois. So throughout the 1980s, Jimmy John's was pretty much only selling sandwiches to college students throughout Illinois. The next reason behind their success is delivery. That's like the biggest thing they advertise, right? Freaky fast delivery? Well, that also stems from the beginning. Despite being near a university, that first restaurant wasn't in the best location. It was a 600 square foot building that had previously 
previously been a garage that was converted to a pizza place that failed and was now being converted into a sandwich shop. According to Jimmy John, it was not a great location. I started to deliver not because it was part of a business plan, but to get sales. Since it was a tiny, unknown building that wasn't getting a lot of traffic, he started offering delivery to the dorm rooms, charging 25 cents per sandwich to do it. And I realize that sounds so obvious and common today, but at the time, nobody else was delivering sandwiches. It would be hard to find any restaurant delivering anything. By offering something different, it gave the students a good reason to order his food, and it has since remained a key part of their success. In the early 2000s, when same-store sales were falling, again, they utilized the delivery aspect to try to recover things. Their delivery radius was tightened, sacrificing potential sales from people outside of it in favor of giving promises of faster delivery times. You know, they could promise faster delivery if they didn't have to deliver it as far. Today, that radius is so small that they now advertise that they will bring you a sandwich within five minutes. Really, it's almost necessary because, as I said, getting food delivered from a restaurant is way more common than it used to be, and that's been concerning. Their same store sales started dropping right as all the third party delivery services started gaining popularity. So even though it has been a big part of their strategy over the years, it's questionable if that will continue to be the case. Another big reason behind the success of Jimmy John's is simplicity, and this is where they really stand out to me. I've already touched on it a little bit. I mean, Jimmy John's would have been a hot dog place, but sandwiches were simpler in that they required less equipment and therefore less of an investment. It's a similar principle that has helped make them so successful with franchising. That's basically where other people pay the central company to open and operate their own Jimmy John's. He started doing that in 1994 in Wisconsin and then other nearby states. It has since spread throughout most of the country. Today, about 98% of all Jimmy John's are franchised. They have attracted so many qualified people wanting to do it, partially because of that simplicity. It has traditionally been cheaper than most other fast food restaurants to do it, and in many ways, easier to operate it as well. And it's not just the starting cost. Everything about Jimmy John's is simpler, mainly their menu. When he first had the idea to open a sandwich shop, he created six different sandwiches, asked his friends and family to test them, and narrowed that down to four sandwiches that went on to make up his entire menu in the beginning. Clearly, it has since expanded quite a bit, but still not to the level of most competitors. I realize that if you look at their menu today, it does look kind of complicated, but it's really just making a bunch of different combinations out of a limited number of ingredients. They only offer seven meats, three breads, and one cheese. Provolone, if you're wondering. Unlike most competitors, they have no soups, no hot food, no salads. You would think that would be seen as a bad thing to many customers, but for Jimmy John's, that is their advertisement. They embrace their limited menu as a selling point, and not to mention that the simplicity of making these limited ingredient cold sandwiches helps maintain those freaky fast delivery times. My final reason behind their success is quality, which is a broad term that I'm using to encompass a couple of different things. Again, back to franchising. Potentially one of the biggest risks in doing it is a loss of quality control. If you're not finding the right people to run these restaurants and maintaining a close, positive relationship with them, the restaurants are going to suffer. That has been the core reason behind the decline of many fast food restaurants, including a main competitor of theirs, Quiznos. Jimmy John was hesitant to franchise for a long time for that very reason. When he opened his second and third restaurants, he personally spent a year working at each of them to ensure that they were up to his standards. When he did start franchising, he ensured that the layouts, the food, the processes, and everything else was the same as the others, so that the customer would get a similar experience no matter what location they went to. And even then, he seemed to be very careful about opening new ones. In a 2015 interview, he said, Could we grow faster? Yes, but I don't want to be the biggest. I want to be the best at what I do. They also maintain quality by using what they call freaky fresh ingredients. I guess everything is freaky over at Jimmy John's. Their bread is baked fresh inside the restaurants every day. The vegetables are hand sliced also inside the restaurants. Their meats are all natural. They call their condiments best in class. I don't know what else to say here. It starts sounding like a commercial for them if I go into too much detail, but the food is fresh over at Jimmy John's. So there you go. Those are what I believe to be the five biggest reasons behind the success of Jimmy John's. But to finish up the story, there have been some major changes going on behind the scenes. In 2007, Jimmy John sold 28% of the company to a private equity firm. The restaurant was trying to expand, but having trouble buying real estate in good spots, so they were looking for a partner that could help them, and it does seem like that's what happened. They closed more than 100 real estate deals in the following year, and just about doubled their locations within the next three years. Then, in 2016, the majority of the company was sold to a different private equity firm in a deal that valued them at $3 billion. Finally, in 2019, Jimmy John's was sold to Inspire. 
Empire, the company who had already been the owner of other fast food restaurants like Arby's, Buffalo Wild Wings, and Sonic, and this deal made them the fourth largest restaurant company in the country. Let me know in the comments, what do you think of Jimmy John's? How do they compare to Subway or Jersey Mike's or any of those other top sandwich spots? And if you are one of their customers, I always have to ask, what is your favorite thing on their menu, and why do you go there? Is it something I mentioned on my list or something entirely different? And any other thoughts you have about Jimmy John's, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Today's sponsor is Audible, something that has become a part of my routine. When I get stressed out or have too much stuff going on, I like to go on relaxing walks outside, and what more relaxing way to do that than with an audiobook? My most recent one has been Norm MacDonald based on a true story. It's hard to describe exactly what it is, it's unlike anything else, but it was made by my absolute favorite comedian and I think it's pretty great. But if that's not your thing, don't worry, because Audible has an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre, and as an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including their bestsellers and new releases. Members also get full access to a growing selection of included audiobooks, Audible originals, and podcasts. Let Audible help you discover new ways to laugh, be inspired, and be entertained. New members can try it for free for 30 days, visit audible.com slash company man or text company man to 500 500. Thank you for watching.